All right. So now we're moving into rational functions. These, as you recall, are the ones that are gonna end up at logs. Now you've got your reference sheet there, but in case you um, don't have it you know, on hand, I want you to remember what we're searching for is something of the form f dash on f. If you have something like this and you're integrating it, then you will get log of the absolute value of that particular function, of course, plus a constant if you have an indefinite integral. So therefore, I have a look at this particular question here and I, I think, well, I've got a, a bottom function there of five minus two x. What I want the numerator therefore to look like is negative two, and it's not negative two at the moment. So before I do any calculus, I'm gonna reshape this question so that it looks neater for me um, to work with. So that it looks like this f dash on f situation. So for starters, on that three on the numerator right now, it's not helping me at all, so I'm gonna get rid of it straight away. When I say get rid of, I mean factorize it outside of the integral. So that gives me a three out the front. I'm still integrating from one to two, and then there's a one on the numerator, okay? So the three's out of the way. And now, as I pointed out, what I want is that negative two on the numerator in here. Now, I can't just put a negative two there because it's convenient to me. If I'm multiplying this by negative two, then to compensate, I need to divide by negative two as well because that way everything stays preserved. Just like, you know, if I were um, saying to you, okay, if I want to simplify, a fraction like this, then I would divide the top and then I would also divide the bottom, right? So here I'm going to, uh, I'll do it in another color so you can see it. I'm gonna multiply the top by negative two, which means that I'm also going to divide by negative two, like so. Everything is still balanced, just like doing the top and the bottom in a fraction. So this is three out the front. I'm still integrating from one to two. And then on the denominator, I have five minus 2x. Let's move that negative 2 over because it's slightly bothering me that it's not in the middle. Okay, so hopefully you can see there the colors make it clear. What I'm doing is that negative 2 and that negative 2 balance out, but they're better for me from an integration standpoint because now inside the integral I've got f dash on f. Uh, let's tidy up that uh, constant coefficient out the front. Let's write it as negative 3 over 2. Big square brackets because now I'm actually doing the integration. It's log of the absolute value of five minus two x. There we go, from one to two. Uh, I'm going to now do the evaluation. So there's the negative three over two still hanging out the front. Actually, let's leave that as a square bracket because I'm gonna have a few brackets on the inside. Log of the absolute value of five minus two lots of two is four. So that's five, take away four. I'm gonna subtract the lower bound. So this is now log of the absolute value of five take away two lots of one is two. There we go. Uh, let's see, what can I do here? Well, this is negative three on two at the front and then log of five minus four is log of one and log of five minus two is log of three. Now remember, this uh, natural log of one, in fact, the log of any base of one is that power that if you raise that power, you'll get one. That power can only be zero. Of course, if you had trouble remembering that, the calculator will help you out. I'm gonna get zero take away log three, which can't be simplified at this point. Double negative happening, so it looks to me like I get three log three on two. And the question, I believe, asked for four significant figures. So I'm gonna reach back for my calculator over here. I haven't actually entered this value yet, so let's, let's do it together. Um, what have I got here? So this is gonna be, three functions, natural log, three, and the whole thing is divided by two. So I've got a value here, just like I mentioned before, I'm gonna write the entire calculator display, 1.64791843, et cetera. And now I'm gonna do my approximation. So four significant figures, I've already got the unit, then I'm gonna go tenths, hundreds, thousandths. So that's six, four, eight to four significant figures, done. Okay, that was the first of the rational functions. Let's have a look at this next one. Now, it's an area and they've provided the graph to us. How generous and gracious of them. They say find the area of the region in the first quadrant. So you can see here the coordinate axes here tell us that this is the fourth quadrant up in the top right. 
bounded by um, this curve here. So let's have a look. How are we going to write this? So I think the best way is to say, let's call this guy the red function. Which one is that? Well, it's going to be this curvy one over here. Hopefully, when you look at this, uh, at this algebra here, you recognize that this is going to be a hyperbola. And then my contrast, you have this guy, y equals 2. So let's choose another color here. Mm, how about dark green? y equals 2 over here. This is that horizontal line that goes right over the top here, right? So let me just go all the way across, y equals 2, like so. Finally, they then provide us with some x boundaries. So x equals 1, x equals 2. These correspond to the vertical lines um, that you can see. And that's how we end up with this blue region that's shaded. So how do we find this region? Well, this is an area between two curves. We could construct, excuse me, um, a rectangle around this and then work out the area under the curve. But we actually already have a direct way to work out areas between curves. We would say that the area is the integral from the bottom to the top, which in this case has just been provided to us straight out. And what we want is the top take away the bottom. Now you just have to look carefully and work out which one is which. In this case, the top function is the green one and the bottom one is the red one. Now what happens if you get this incorrect? What will happen is if you do them the other way around, um, you're gonna get the same magnitude of, of value for the definite integral, but it'll be negative. And because a lot of people realize at that point, ooh, ooh, I have an area, I better make it positive. Some people will just take that mind, that value, let's say it was like negative three, and they'll say on the next line, oh, oh, it's an area. And they'll just say three units squared, okay? Now, I just wanna make a big song and dance and say, this is not a good idea. In fact, what this betrays is you didn't understand what you were doing. You just noticed that something went wrong and you're like, oh, better fix it, okay? It's a real, it's a real fudge is the way we uh, mathemat mathematicians would call it. What you wanna do here is instead get the integral right in the correct order rather than just getting it wrong and then say, uh-oh, I'm not meant to have that because that betrays a lack of understanding. So it's important that I identify which function's which, which one's top, which one's bottom. I've done that, so like we said, the top one's the straight line. It just has a function of two. There it is, the top function. And then I subtract the bottom function, which in this case is two minus two over x, all with respect to x. So I hope you can see that simplifies into that, or substitutes, I should say, and that substitutes into there. As we've seen before, it is important to do any simplification you can before actually integrating, because integrating is a lot of work. Um, and so the less I can do of it, um, and the more I can simplify in other ways, the better. So um, before I do my integration, I notice that there's gonna be two take away two, so that's cancels. Then I've got a negative and a negative here. So these cancel as well, leaving me with just this last term on the end here, the two over x. How convenient. So. This is my function, and by now, um, hopefully we're familiar enough that this is just going to give us, as a primitive, log, uh, rather, two log the absolute value of x. There's our primitive function. Substituting one and two, and pretty rapidly you're gonna get, let's do the, uh, oh yeah, well, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, let's do the two there and then the one there. This is just like before, um, log of one is zero, so all you get is two log two. I look back at the question, did they ask us to approximate in any way? And the answer is no, they didn't. So therefore I'm gonna leave it exact as log of something, um, but I have said it's an area, so I'm gonna say, therefore the area is, I have my value and now I put on my units, which in this case is square units. Dunsky.